Hi guys, Paul here. And this is a picture that I actually posted on our Facebook page and it got quite the response. And a number of people wanted me to do a follow-up video on this and show exactly what the process is. Just, it's not something that I actually had planned. It was more uh, the fact that I had to chop down some props and I wasn't sure how to go about doing it. And um, this is probably the best way that I came up with, which was basically routing the props down in size. Now, essentially what Thomas had done was build a 150 millimeter uh, micro size quad. And what he needed was basically a small props for it. And the only props that we actually did have were Gemfan uh, 4045. So they're four inch props and we needed to actually cut these down to three inch and produce bullnose props. Uh, only because um, from all the reading he did, trying to get a hold of three inch props was going to be quite difficult. And I sort of looked at some sellers, uh, some eBay sellers, etc. And I couldn't actually get a hold of them. So hence, what I decided to do was actually cut down some props for him. And I thought it'd be a really good surprise when he came out from school that he found props ready to go for his uh, micro size quad. And uh, this is the tool that I actually made. So essentially what we're utilizing here is a Dremel type tool. And I've got a 3D printed plastic part. I've got a old motor mounted on this part. Now you could use plywood. It doesn't really matter what you want to use. Um, and essentially I'm utilizing that motor for its smooth bearings and the five mil adapter on top. So I can actually mount the prop on the actual motor. And then all I do is essentially turn it into the router bit. Now, realistically, you could use anything at all to make this part. It's not going to be too hard at all. Plywood would work. Uh, anything along those lines, you could use metal to make your own tool. Uh, it's pretty basic the way it actually works. Now, we don't want the spindle speed to be too high, so just make sure it's not too high because uh, you don't want to be heating up the plastic. Um, you want to be cutting. It's still going to be uh, running reasonably fast, and this is the direction you want to be turning. You can see the swarf building up on the part of the prop that's going to be cut off and that's what we want to do we want to leave a clean edge on the actual propeller itself the, the bit that we're going to use so as you can see i'm going through nice and slowly it's nice even pressure and i'm not speeding up and in fact towards the end i slow down just a touch so that's pretty much all there is to it i'm just going through one more time just to make sure i've definitely cleared it up quite nicely and then it's just a matter of uh removing the burrs now um what I would suggest is pulling the burrs back the way I've done there and just um, you can you can take them off with your nails. It's not an issue at all. And then what I do is just use a little bit of wet and dry, uh, probably 600 grit or something along those lines, just to touch it up ever so light, lightly. So it doesn't take much at all to clean these up. And as you can see, I'm actually cleaning this up by hand and I get quite a good finish. So when Thomas got home from school, I got him to cut down a few more props himself. And as you can see, look, Thomas had no issues at all. He was a little bit overly cautious when he was doing it, but um, look, he cut his props down and they work just as well as the ones I cut down. So it's pretty simple to do it this way. A little bit messy, so you probably want to wear eye protection, things along those lines, and just be careful that you're using a router to actually uh, cut down the props. So the key thing to take away from this is you're just trying to achieve an accurate cut. Now, there are probably better ways of actually cutting down props. I'm not sure how other people actually do it, but this was the best idea that I could come up with anyway. And um, look, it seemed to work and work quite well. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts and suggestions, uh, please leave them down below. And what I will do is I will get a video up on Thomas's 150mm quad. We just have to shoot some more footage. But once I've got that all edited together, I'll get some video up on that because that's a pretty cool little multi rotor. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Hope it's given you some ideas. Anyway, I'll leave the video with that and I will catch you guys in the next one.